Hello and welcome guys to this session on Mason uh, or rather an introduction to Mason. Today we're talking about um, what Mason is and if we get time try to show you guys a tutorial on Mason how to use Mason. So Mason is uh, a build system just like make um, that is used to compile your project and produce the executables or install them in a given target system. Um, and it has been authored by Jesse Pekanen. Um, so we can go through the uh, online site, website for uh, the Mason build system. Uh, the claim to fame that Mason has is that it's significantly faster in terms of building um, and it supports quite a few languages. So um, if you want to look at it further, um, Jesse has his um, presentations on the Mason Build website. And if you go in this um, documentation folder under additional documentation and conference presentations on Mason, you'd find this um, folder containing uh, all these presentations that he has made and they're excellent. I would recommend just starting out with the introduction to Mason build system where he talks about his approach of why the Mason system is so fast and that, you know, it, it helped me understand at least, I wouldn't say understand, but at least appreciate how fast the Mason build system is compared to some of the other systems. And in addition to that, I think there is this other um, uh, tutorial or presentation on this um, documentation section that uh, is also under additional documentation and performance comparison. And you can see ARM performance comparison test or a simple comparison test. Now inside this simple comparison test, uh, what he has done or somebody has done who wrote this tutorial is that, you know, they created some fake uh, files with just say a function that returns zero and a whole bunch of these. Um, and then they tried to build this, um, thousands of C files containing this and then the main in one one of the files just calls these functions which just return zero. That's all. They're like a dummy function of some sort, right? And so what they did was they tried to compare um, the all these programs uh, that are used to build um, along three major um, variables, right? The, the first one is uh, that it was the configuration time. Um, the second is the build time. And the third is the empty build time. So let's see what they are. So the configuration time is the time that it takes to generate the necessary build files. This is before the build actually takes place and it's called the configuration step. And the second step is where you actually do the build process and you will figure out you know, what the dependencies are and start building them and then linking them and produce the executable and so on, or, or a library, whatever the target of the, uh, the compile or the build process is. The third is the empty build time. And what is empty build time? Empty build time is basically the time taken if, if nothing changed and you run this build tool, it's going to still go and figure out if any of the dependencies have changed and are somehow changed in a way that we should rebuild it. So if nothing changes, then if you run them, you know, for example, if you run make or Mason again, then the time it takes when nothing has changed to still go through and figure out whether you need to run build again is called the empty build time. So, um, here we have compared the configuration time and here you can see that Mason and CMake Ninja, they, they're Mason and CMake Ninja are kind of, you know, they're both, they're both fast. Um, but 
pre-make is in this configuration time, pre-make is faster or the fastest. And auto tools are really slow, right? So, uh, and there is some, you know, commentary on that. Auto tools are very slow, maybe an order of magnitude slower than the other tools. And, you know, this is kind of makes us understand if you go back here that Mason's fast. It's not the fastest, but it's relatively fast compared to the other um, tools. Most common tools being CMake, uh, Mason, and Make, and you can see that they are all comparable in this first step. Um, the second step, uh, the second step is the build time, and in terms of the build time, you can see Mason is quite a bit better than all these other tools. Especially, you know, look at this Escons. Um, it's way faster than that. But if you compare it to CMake, make combination, it's a little bit faster than that. Um, it's not quite 2x better, but I would say it's 50% faster um, than CMake, make combination. And then CMake Ninja, maybe it's like 30% faster than that. So again, in the build time, you can see that this is Mm, Mason's quite a bit of performance boost uh, compared to the other tools that you may be using currently. And then empty build time is where it shines. Uh, you see Mason is only takes 0 0.03 seconds in this case, whereas, you know, CMake's taking almost half a second. CMake Ninja is actually quite fast. And Escons is, ter is doing terrible here. And then Premake and auto tools are taking some some time, but Mason and CMake Ninja are blazing fast in this empty build time. So um, this, I just want to cover this to show that you know there is motivation to use Mason because it's um, a nice and really fast tool, um, and that's why it's preferred. In I've started running to this in lots of other um, projects that I'm working across. So it's pretty popular. Um, then the other thing I wanted to cover is, you know, why is it called Mason? Uh, that's kind of a funny name. So there's a little bit of history here in the FAQ. By the way, if, FAQs are pretty nice. So if you want to uh, scroll down on the left side, you'll find in the tab called FAQ, you'll find all these on the website. So the FAQ describes why it was named Mason because they had two constraints. Uh, one, this name should not match any other Debian package, and it should not match a SourceForge project name. So the first suggestion was Gluon, and Gluon is, is something that holds protons and neutrons. It's a, it's a particle that holds protons and neutrons together. And since they were basically compiling source code and binding them together to make a whole project, they thought Luan was a good name, but it was this name was taken. So then they chose Mason uh, to be the next name, and Mason is the is also an elementary particle, and that's where the name came from. So with the, with that being said, I guess just a quick review of the features. Mason is uh, is multi-platform. Uh, let me just grab my uh, markers here. So it's uh, Multi-platform supports Linux, Mac, Windows, GCC, CLang, Visual Studio, and stuff. Um, supports languages. There's lots of languages here, especially if you're working with C, C++, even Java, Rust. All these are supported. Um, build definitions are very readable. Uh, and cross-compilation for many operating systems as well as bare metal. It's optimized and extremely fast. Um, and then, yeah, and then it's it's also fun, I guess. I don't know. Um, seems like it can do some cool stuff as you as you run into it. But those are the main features. And with that, I guess maybe it's time now to dive into a demo.
Okay, so now we are in the tutorial section of our video. And here we are going to look at a simple project that shows dependencies use case in Mason. Now, as it says here in this website that this is a simple project and we are going to show external dependencies, how they're integrated into the project and it is for Linux. I am going to be demonstrating on Linux, so it will probably be simpler. First thing is, because it is um, dependent on GTK, you have to install the dependencies. And then the next thing is, it talks about the humble beginning. So first is obviously a Hello World program. And so let's try the Hello World first. I am going to back up to Mason 2 to 1. Um, and then inside this, we will first look at main.c, which is very simple. All it does is hello there. And that's pretty much all there is. So let's also look at Mason build file, which is the file that is um, used to uh, compile. And so here, first thing we will do is define the project. And then um, after the project, we will show uh, we will create the executable um, and the executable's name is demo and it depends on source code. And at this point, it is very, very simple. Okay, so all we are saying is what is the name of the project, what language the project is in and the executable, what its dependencies are and that's it. That is very, very simple. So first thing is that we will we'll have to create a folder where um, Mason would compile this. So first of all, you have to say Mason um, build or whatever you want to call your build directory. And it will create the build folder. So now if you do ls, you can see the build folder is there. Next thing is we will compile it. So Mason compile dash C build and it should compile it and linking target to demo. So now we can see that the target has been created. And if we go to build directory and run demo, it says hello there. So remember that uh, main.c's purpose was to print hello there. So we have completed this uh, humble beginning tutorial. Now moving on from there, dependencies. So when we talk about dependencies, this is, as it says, it's very, very simple. It's, it's, it's trivial. Now we want to create a graphical window uh, instead of just printing it there and we use GTK plus. Um, and then we have to edit the main file and this is what this version looks like. And so you have added, you know, a window and you have put a label inside the window, set title, et cetera, et cetera. And you have displayed it, right? Eventually you do show. So show me show creates this window and then that's pretty much this one. So now the interesting thing is if you now look at the Mason build file, it has all the same stuff tutorial and C, but it defi defines this new variable GTK depth, which is nothing more than dependency on GTK plus 3.0. And then in our executable section, a new thing has appeared here which is in dependencies of this executable, we add GTK depth, which is nothing but this variable here, right? So we um, we have basically defined this GTK depth and integrated into our executable. And as it says that if you have multiple libraries, you would have to create different variables and then connect them here. Now, um, in this case, we don't need it. We only have one dependency, so we are good to go. Let us continue our tutorial and go to Mason Tute 2. And here we can see main.c has been modified to include all the GTK stuff, the show window using GTK. And we have converted our Mason build file to add the dependency. You can see here dependency to GTK 3.0 has been added and this variable has been integrated into the executable. Now we are ready and so we will do the same steps again. Just so you remember these, I will delete the old build and Mason build that should create our uh, build um, requirements. Uh, as you saw, it is the configuration step 
and it generates all the configuration files. And now we have to do Mason compile dash C build. And that creates the demo. And now we are ready to run the demo and we say build demo. And it shows hello from GNOME. And so there it is. We have now successfully completed the uh, demos that are provided in the tutorial section on the Mason Build website. Hopefully you have understood that, you know, how you can simply compile a project and then how you can add dependencies. The thing to note here is that the GTK is not something that is part of your source code. It is something that exists in your system. And very simply, all you had to say was GTK plus 3.0. Remember, a library is composed of many things. It, there could be shared um, SO files or DLL files, and there could be header files. You did not have to define what your header files are, where your SO files are located. All you had to say was dependency, right? All very simply you did was dependency GTK 3.0 and integrated that into your uh, executable. That's all you had to do. And behind the scenes, Mason, is clever enough to go look for uh, whether it's package config or other means. It figured out where the dependency was installed and integrated it into the project. We didn't have to do anything special. So um, that is the power of Mason's dependencies. Now it is also possible to create dependencies by yourself, like a library that you wrote yourself and you can integrate that into Mason as well. So we will cover that in another video today. This is all we have. And hopefully you liked the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you would like more videos on this, please do leave me in the comments. Otherwise, have a good day and I'll see you in another video. Take care and bye-bye.